Welcome to another podcast of Master Investor. Glad to be here again on another money, business, and investing talk. If you're new to our community, make sure you subscribe here and all other platforms on social media. Look for the logo. Visit our website. Get our ebooks. We have two out that are right now available on Kindle and any other platform where you can read ebooks. We have paperback as well if you like to have the physical book. However, I suggest that you go straight to our website to get our ebooks because each ebook will come with extra bonuses and assets that ultimately will help your finances in asset column. And when you get it from our website, regardless of how many more assets we will add in the future, you will always have access to those assets for the price that you pay today. Tomorrow's price will be different because as we added more value into each ebook, because on our website, each ebook, we have turned that book into a digital course. So it has videos, documents and other assets that will come with the entire package of that digital course okay so you will always be grandfather in so if you get it today you're getting it for a bargain when you get it from our website because we were we will be adding more assets into each digital course so you will always take advantage of those assets for the price that you paid today so go get it on our website right now i put the link in the description of this podcast if you have any questions by the end of today's talk please make sure you drop your question down on the chat box and we will come back and answer those for you okay now today i want to speak about the importance of building wealth through real estate how can we obtain a first real estate property i want to talk about debt because when we speak about commercial real estate property we have to understand debt and also if you want to learn about money you also have to understand debt because today money is created with debt and we speak about it all the time. Today money is a full currency. It's not thing back in it, like it's only confidence that is backing money, but there's nothing physical. There's not gold backing the dollar today. August 15, 1971, that's when President Nixon separated the gold standard from the US dollar. From that moment forward, money became fiat money became paper money monopoly money a currency and just an idea backed up by confidence so that's why when we use debt that money is tax-free because money is created with debt so legally we cannot pay taxes on debt. so it's already an advantage to the wealthy entrepreneur and a master investor to utilize debt because we're minimizing the number one highest expense that we all have, which are which is taxes. And we need to learn how to minimize taxes legally using the tax code, the corporate laws, and being on the right tax bracket in order to take advantage. People like to call them loopholes, but they're not loopholes. It's just the law. So when we use debt, we cannot pay taxes on that debt because that money is tax-free, okay, according to the law. And then when we build passive income, then passive income, when we do it right and we strategize correctly with, their, with a team of professionals that can help us minimize taxes through business expense, then we are literally minimizing taxes all the way to zero. So passive income is taxed at the lowest bracket out of all types of incomes that exist. There are three types of income. We talk about it all the time, but I'm gonna repeat it again because for those who are new to our podcast, these are the basics of entrepreneurship and investing. So we need to go back to the basics every day and remind ourselves so that we can have the wealthy mindset and operate with it because a lot of people are still operating with the old rules of money. So that's why we created a new 
a book that is called The 10 New Rules of Money. You can also find it on Amazon or you can go straight to our website. We have two books right now, The 10 New Rules of Money and How to Build Cash Flow with the Internet. So, like I was saying, be comfortable with debt, okay? There are a lot of gurus out there talking about, oh, you must be debt free. No, that is not the way to get wealthy. You must and we must control debt in order to create wealth. Otherwise, we're not doing it right and it's gonna actually end up costing you a lot of money because you're gonna be paying a lot in taxes and you're not gonna be able to use leverage accordingly to build wealth, okay? Because debt is our friend. Debt is leverage for us when we are building our asset column. So if we can use a credit card that we have to invest to start our business, great. We're already doing it the right way. Remember, good debt makes us wealthy. It puts money into our pocket and the debt service plus the interest gets paid with the revenue of the investment, which we are controlling. So we use the debt, we use the credit card to acquire an asset. That asset is producing enough money to pay the debt service back, the interest, and also every time we make a payment to the bank, we are keeping whatever is left, which is a form of positive cash flow or also known as passive income, which tax at the lowest bracket. So we have three types of income a person can work for. Earned income or ordinary income, which comes from a job. That's when a person trades time for money. It stacks at the highest bracket. That's when a person gets a paycheck. They usually see a half of that paycheck already taken out via taxes, etc. So the government gets paid first and that is called earned income. So it's very hard to become wealthy working for money at a job, okay? Because you only have so much time to give to that company and the company is only willing to pay you a certain amount per hour. So you can only work, let's say 12 hours a day. So it's very difficult for you to sell your time and become wealthy. You need to understand that earned income is the type of income that majority of people in the world will will only work for in their entire lives. And that's why they don't have freedom. They don't have total freedom. They have to always check with somebody in order for them to do something. If they wanna go to vacation, they need to request a vacation. They, if they're sick, they have to let them know that they're sick, etc. On the other side of the coin, we have the other two types of income, which comes from investment, and that is capital gains income and passive income. Capital gains income, it stacks, at a high, uh, it stacks higher than passive income. However, there are certain exceptions with capital gains income by utilizing the corporate laws and different asset classes. For example, when we have capital gains from a real estate property, which we purchased at a certain price and we, let's say, fixed it up and we flipped it and we sold it for a profit, that profit right there is capital gains income. And we have to pay taxes on that unless we use the law that is called 1031 exchange, which means we have to find a property within six months and we have to meet the requirements specific for the, each state in which we are on. And we have to move that money, those that profit which we made from that real estate transaction into a new and bigger real estate property within a certain amount of time in order for us to defer taxes and not pay taxes at that moment. So with those exceptions, then we can minimize taxes with capital gains, but otherwise we have to pay taxes on capital gains income, okay? So if we buy a cryptocurrency and we sell in the future for more for a higher price, we have to pay taxes on those on those profits. That's why here at Master Investor, rule number one of our company is that we work to build passive income and make money work hard for us. And the reason why we want to do that is because passive income is taxed at the lowest bracket. It allows us to literally run all of our expenses, including living expenses, personal expenses through the business legally when we have a tax strategy that we have worked on with our CPA and our team of professionals, our business attorney, etc. So 
We know we're gonna make this much money on passive income this year. Well, we already know where that money is gonna go and how we're going to distribute that money into our expenses and how we're gonna report them every time we spend money because it's going to allow us to minimize taxes through business expenses. And so understanding what are we going to do with the money before we even get it is key in order to build wealth. So let's get right to it. How to acquire the first real estate property. If you have no real estate property whatsoever that is making you cash flow. Now, I'm not talking about your big home that you live or your house that you just purchased and you're living in and you have to go out and work to pay for that mortgage. I'm not talking about that because that's a liability. You can actually turn that around and make it an asset to you. If you move out or if you have, let's say more than three rooms, and you can just stay in one and rent out the other two rooms to tourists and other people. And that money will cover the mortgage and will leave you with some positive cash flow after all expenses are paid. Then now that house that you have is an asset. Okay. But otherwise, a house is a liability if you have to get up every morning and go to work. And then at the end of the month, you're paying that mortgage with your earned income. Okay. But you can get out of that house, you can probably move somewhere else, get a room, and then rent out the entire house through Airbnb. And now the house is bringing you enough to pay for the mortgage, the maintenance of the house, the taxes of the house, and also leave you with positive cash flow every single month. And that will be good debt. That will be good mortgage because it's making us wealthy. The same thing goes with commercial real estate property. Actually, the bigger the deal is, the easier it is to raise capital because the banks are looking for bigger deals. The banks want to see an actual deal that is big enough for them to study the cash flow analysis, for them to be able to understand the last 10 years of taxes of that property and how we can improve it by us taking over the property and how we can manage it better than the current owner of that property and we have to show all that to the bank the bank doesn't care about our academic education doesn't care about your grades at school they care about the financial statement of the property and our personal financial statement that's why when you get how to build cash from with the internet ebook on our website you will also have access to a financial statement a personal financial statement that you will download into your excel or you can print it out and fill it in with your expenses, your income, your liabilities, and assets. So understanding our personal financial statement is the first step that we need to take in order to build true wealth and total freedom in our lives. So how do we obtain our first real estate property? We need to analyze different deals. A website that I use all the time to find our real estate property here at Mass Investor is loopnet.com. It's a great website where it gives you deals that are coming out on the market, real estate, commercial, commercial real estate properties for lease and for sale. So we want to look for sale and we want to look for those properties that bring in a return on our investment that is high and also a ways that we can also improve that bottom line. So if the current cash flow of that commercial real estate property is X, Y, and Z, then we need to figure out, hey, can we do something different here that the current owner is not doing in order to increase cash flow? And then from there, we can actually begin to understand that this business or this operation that we're looking at is a healthy one. It's a good investment because the numbers work. The numbers are already working. And also we want to look for seller finance. We want to acquire the entire property using debt as much as possible. Even if you have capital saved up in the bank, let's say you have 20% of that property in your bank because you've been saving for the past 10 years, 20 years from your work. You want to utilize that money to raise capital. You want to utilize that money to acquire an investment that will create positive cash flow. You want to turn that earned income into passive income, okay? Or capital gains income, but I suggest you focus on passive income. So if we can get the entire property 100% finance and the property will create enough cash flow to pay for all the expenses, including the debt service, and also leave us with positive cash flow every single month, 
after all expenses are paid, including the debt service, then that is infinite return on investment because if we got the entire property through seller finance and through a loan where we didn't have to put anything down, then that is a 100% finance through seller finance and a commercial loan, then that property is giving us infinite return on investment, money for nothing. We're literally controlling the debt, we're controlling the asset, the property, and we still collecting cash flow every single month. So understanding that, what is infinite return on investment will be a breakthrough for the entrepreneur and investor who wishes to become successful at business and investing because it gives us the answers, it gives us the opportunity to literally master the job number one of an entrepreneur, which is raise capital. The number one skill is to learn how to sell without selling, using systems and a smart marketing. And why is that? Because a true business is a system of systems. We're supposed to detach ourselves from our assets and still be able to collect the money. Those assets will work for us, will continue to produce income even when we're not present at the moment of the transactions taking place. So if a system is not in place, in a business and it's not a true business because it's going to require you to be there to hold the business up. We want to have businesses that produce passive income and capital gains income on, on their own. We want to control real assets that we can walk away from and still be able to collect the passive income because we now have to focus on the next asset. Our goal here at Master Investor is that we work to build our asset column by focusing on building passive income and making money work hard for us because not only is our own money, let's say we have money saved up in the bank because we're collecting all this cash flow. Now we got to turn that money into more passive income. We got to move that money into a new asset and raise more capital. But we're also using other people's money. OPM, we're using the bank's money. We're using the seller's um, money from the deals because they're giving us seller finance. And when the owner gives us that type of financing, that means that the owner is saying, okay, I'll take 1.5 million down right now. I'm selling the property for 3.9 and I'm going to finance the rest for the next 15 years at 7%. And that is a property that I'm looking at right now. Actually, that's why I'm giving you that example because I'm doing the diligence on a property that the owner is willing to take $1.5 million down. It has 12 units. Uh, the property is also approved on the back. It's one acre. It's right across from the Miami International Airport and it's approved to do 18 more units. So a total of 30 units. Right now, the 12 units is bringing a cash flow after all expenses are paid of $142,000 per year. And that is not counting the mortgages that, are, that will be in place. So the seller finance that he'll be giving me to take over the property, which is 2 million and something at 7%, will probably require majority or part of that $140,000 cash flow that it has right now. So let's say out of the 142,000, 100,000 goes back to the owner every single year for the next 15 years, okay? At 7%. So 100,000, now I'm left with 42,000 of positive cash flow. If I don't do anything with it, I just give him 1.5 million. Where did that 1.5 million come from? Well, I'm raising it from a bank. I'm raising it from an institution that is willing to give me the loan of that property for 1.5 million. And so I'm getting this property for free because I'm raising the capital. I'm using the bank's money, 1.5 million to give to the owner. I'm taking over the property. I have now a loan with the bank and the owner. So now I have to pay back the 1.5 million probably for the next 30 years. And it's not about paying the property off. I don't want you to get it wrong. Commercial real estate is about controlling debt. Ownership is not the way to do it. It's about control. It's about leverage and control. I want you to take that from this podcast today. It's not about having the pink slip of the building. It's about controlling the debt, controlling the cash flow, 
and be able to obtain properties for free because we're raising capital. We're doing the job number one of an entrepreneur, which is to raise capital. And the job number one of a master investor is to make money work hard. So when we raise capital, then now we put our hat as a master investor, we gotta put that money to work. So treat debt as if you were treat money because it is money. Money is created with debt. Okay, understand that, and I hope that this helps you. If you want to know more about how you can obtain your first property using resources and tools that we all have available today, get our ebook How to Build Cash Flow with the Internet Turn Passive Income On because there's a chapter in that volume that will detail exactly all the steps that you need in order to obtain your first commercial real estate property using 100% finance. All right, so. There are no excuses why we shouldn't get rich quick. If we're not getting wealthy fast, then we're not doing it right. We should be able to get wealthy fast today because of the technology, the information that we have access to, the ability to find properties online with one click. Go to loopnet.com and begin to analyze different deals, ask for the financial statements, talk to the brokers, and begin to learn how to refinance your statements because that is the foundation of true wealth. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed this podcast again. I will talk to you later on tomorrow. And make sure you visit all of our social media platforms. Subscribe to the channel here at Master Investor. I appreciate your time and the business that you're giving us here at Master Investor. Get our ebooks right now, and we are releasing a new ebook in the next month on crypto because crypto is a currency now. It's not just an asset that we can hold on and make capital gains and come with it. We can actually use crypto to pay businesses and use it as a form of payment. So crypto is a currency today. So we there are five different asset classes that we can invest on and build our portfolio with. Number one is real estate. Number two, business. Number three, crypto. Number four, paper assets. And number five, commodities. And when we want to hedge for inflation and protect ourselves from down economies, we want to diversify among the five different asset classes so that we can successfully protect ourselves from economy crashes and inflation. In fact, economy crashes are our friend and inflation is also our friend. We use it as leverage, we use it as a tool to become even wealthier for free legally. Remember, keep our hands clean, do everything ethically because we are attracting freedom and that's the ultimate reward is total freedom. So we never want to jeopardize what we're working for here, which is total freedom, all right? So keep our hands clean, do everything ethically and have integrity. Our reputation is a most important thing we all have okay so start building relationships with other people that are in the business that know exactly what they're doing that have experience and then begin to take action on your end because you got to get the information but you got to turn that into knowledge and the only way to turn information into knowledge is by applying it applying it into our lives the second we grab that information we turn around and we apply so whatever you learn from this podcast Make sure you're applying it into your life. Otherwise, just information and not knowledge. Anyway, bring you the good and bad news of money, the business principles of working on economies. Stay great and wealthy. I'll talk to you next time. Bye for now.